Good evening and uh, hello, I'm in the woods again, my favourite place to be, myself and Nick, my good friend, and I thought uh, I got a light to fire and I thought to myself, instead of doing some fancy technique, I thought I'd do fire lighting for beginners. So I'm going to take you through a few things now and a few pointers and talk about what you need to get you kicked off. So for my regular viewers, hope you enjoy watching this. Most of you probably are quite adept at lighting a fire, but bear with me. So as a beginner, you may not have any kit. So I'm going to light this fire now using no flashy knives, no axe, no saw, just twigs and three little items. I've got a box of matches, regular small household matches, and I've got a cigarette lighter and a candle. Now the woodland we're in today is mainly coniferous trees, so evergreens, uh, pines, spruce, that kind of thing. So it's a damn sight easier lighting a fire here than it is in a broadleaf forest. So I'm going to show you now what kind of stuff you need to gather. So what you want to look at, look for now, when you're first lighting a fire is thin dry twigs. This kind of thing. Now in a lot of uh, coniferous forests, you get loads of these at the bottom of the tree. You're also going to want some larger ones for fuel and that kind of thing. On the bottoms of the trees, they remain dry. Unfortunately, you may not be able to see it, a bit awkward. So I'm going to go and gather some wood now and get the fire going. Plenty here. Usually as a rule you don't pick up from the floor but if they're still attached to the tree is a good chance it's still nice and dry. So I've gathered some wood now. There's my what we call first stage kindling which is the, the thin stuff which you light first. Then I've got some second stage kindling which is about pencil thickness. Then I've got thumb thickness, first stage fuel. Now what I always do is uh, put a bed, bed of twigs down first, so you're not lighting on the cold ground. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a few other sticks around the side, so I can rest the small stuff on to get a match underneath. One thing when you're lighting a fire in a coniferous forest, you've got to watch that you don't catch the ground alight because there's uh, usually a lot of dry pine needles on the ground. So either scrape the ground to get to bare earth or like I've done here is basically get some clay and make a mound and light your fire on top of the mound. One other thing when you're starting off, you should have plenty of water to douse the fire just in case things go out a bit, bit out of hand or when you're leaving you want to make sure it's completely out. So there's a few sticks there now. Probably put a couple more on. Now I've got something I can lean up against. But please bear in mind, this is how I'm doing it. There's plenty of other guys around there who will do it a different way. This is just the way I think it's a good way to start. So there's a bundle of twigs. All I'm going to do now is snap them. Now, if you don't want to completely snap them, what they tend to do is unfold. Well, there we are. There's my small bundle of twigs. You put them down first. Now, 
I'm going to get some slightly thicker ones. Not too much because you don't want to uh, smother the fire before you start. Now the easiest way to do this is with a candle and a lighter. Of course you can use a candle and a box of matches but it's easier to use a lighter. But I'll do it the first time now with a match. Now there's a few different schools of thoughts on lighting fire with matches. Ray Mears says strike it away from yourself and some other people say bring it to you. I'm of the school, bring it to you, because you've got more time to cup it in your hands so the wind doesn't blow it out. So that's what I'm going to do now. So the ideal situation is you can light the fire with one match. So hopefully this will work now. So I'm going to strike the match on the box, cup it in my hands, and then carefully place it underneath. So you feed the fire This is probably the safest way to start. You can start as well by having a massive twig bundle, but that can be a bit dangerous. So seeing as I'm aiming this at beginners, it's probably best to do it the safe way. And the safe way is to uh, build it bit by bit. Ideally what you want to do before you start putting more fuel on is make sure that the flames are higher than the fuel. We're burning well now. So now we can get our larger stuff on. And I always find it's better to lay all the sticks in one direction. Well there you go. That's the safest way to light the fire in the woods. Hope that's been informative. Well, now the fire's established and we've got a pot of water on the boil for tea. And we put some bigger stuff around the sides, which will catch nice and easy, basically, because they're nice and dry. Always get uh, dry fuel. So now it's time to crack on with my cordage project. Now Sunday morning I came up here and if you watched my video I gathered uh, some willow bark and I stripped it down. So I took it home and I didn't dry it or anything. I kept it in an ice cream box. 
And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to separate it into fibres. I put a little bit of water in the box to keep it moist. This is the first bit. This cordage is just to do a bow drill. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be functional. So I'm going to crack on now, I've got quite a lot to do. So time for my evening meal. Got boiling the bag rice. And a vacuum pack curry. So I've got the pot on the boil now, and as soon as that's boiling, I'm going to chuck that in, make that, and then when that's done, I put it to one side and I'll uh, chuck my curry in. Well, I've separated some fibres, and to be honest with you, I wish I'd never started this because it's getting right on my nerves. But uh, I will follow it through. So that's something to get started. Got a few more to do now. So my rice has been on now 12 minutes, so that's coming off. Done. So it's now hanging up there, dripping, putting the fire out. <laughs> I shall move it. So I've got enough water left in the pot. Make a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm not making tea with that. So I've got my boil in the bag. And from past experience, when I do this, you need to pierce the bag a little bit. Right, so I put a little hole in it. So boiling the bag is basically the wood's microwave. Well I'm looking forward to it because I haven't eaten anything since 6 o'clock this morning so I am starving. Well, <clears throat> that's what I've managed to strip off uh, this evening. I've got some more there but they're shorter pieces. so. I'm going to have to go home in a bit anyway, so because it's getting dark now. So hopefully the weekend I'll be weaving this up and uh, doing the bow drill. I may do a little bit of weaving now to get my hand back in, because I haven't done this uh, with Willow for years. So I'm about halfway through now. Looks a bit messy, just needs the ends cutting off. But I'm going to keep it damp until I get to do the bow drill. <laughs> 